In today's video, we're going to take a detailed look at Flowwise AI, which is a tool that falls under generative AI space. It's an open source tool which can be found on GitHub. And the tool introduces itself as Visual UI tool, which allows you to build customized LLM orchestration flow and AI agents. Now, what do we mean by customized LLM orchestration flow? That is something we are going to demonstrate as we build a practical use case. Since Flowwise AI, provides us a visual environment and drag and drop interface, it also kinds of fall in the arena of local no code platform which are gaining popularity these days. So if I go to Google and perform a quick search of the market share of local no code platform and without going into the intricacies of which results are more credible, you can see that the trajectory of low code no code platform is on a rising end. Thus, Flowwise AI is uniquely positioned in the low code no code platform arena as well because it allows you to build LLM application. It is based on LangChain framework. Now, in case you're not familiar with LangChain, it's a framework which allows developers to build applications based on LLM models. However, one thing before we begin with the installation and demonstration is the architectural aspect of LangChain. And here specifically, I'm talking about the RAG architecture. Now, RAG architecture is the foundation of building applications, LLM-based application, where you augment LLM with additional data, as you can see over here. During the demonstration, one of the diagram that we'll often refer to is found on this particular page, where we're gonna take a look at the document loader, the splitter, embeddings, and vector stores. Now, the first thing that I would like to establish is why do we need to augment additional knowledge when LLMs are already trained? And to demonstrate that, I'm gonna go to OpenAI chat interface. Notice that I have selected ChatGPT 3.5 as the underlying foundation model. And I'm going to ask it a question. So as you can see, this is where the need for augmentation comes from. If we query LNM about certain information, which it does not have the information for, we first need to augment that knowledge to the LNM. And then if we query, we'll find the relevant answer. So later in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate to you a practical use case where we will take up the content of this PDF file. We will provide this as augmented knowledge to the LLM. We will re-perform the same query, but that time we will have the answer, the relevant answer to our query. To begin with the installation, we'll visit Docs. We'll go to Getting Started. And since I already have Node.js installed, I'll begin with the installation. Scroll down and you'll find the prerequisites of installing Yarn and then continuing through GitHub repository and that is the route we're going to take on a Windows machine. Now, post the execution of this command, we'll go back. And the last step is to actually build the module. All right, everything looks good. Now we should be able to execute Flowwise. Perfect, the project is now running. We can see the server is now listening at port 3000. We'll click on add new. We'll be brought to a new canvas where we can choose various nodes from the dialog, drag drop them on the interface. But first let's understand what we're trying to build here. I already have a PDF file with me. I've created this file because it contains information which came after the training of LLM. What we are trying to do is to build an AI chatbot, which is going to query LLM with additional augmented information from this PDF file. And to do so, we'll have to carry out all of these operations. So the first thing which has to be done 
is to load some object. In our case, it's a PDF file. So we'll go to the canvas and first search for PDF. As you can see, there are various constructs to choose from. I'll type down PDF here and drag drop this particular portion. This is a node which is named as PDF file and there are two clear sections, one of inputs, others of output. You already know that we have a PDF file which needs to be augmented. So we'll just click on upload file and provide that file as an input. The usage is important. As we can see, there are two options to choose from. One document per page or one document per file. Now it is very important that we distinguish between file and document here. Whenever I refer to file in this demonstration, it refers to the file which exists in the file system. However, document in our context refers to a construct of line chain called document, which we are going to take a look at shortly. In the demonstration, we are going to make use of one document per page. So let's go back to the document. Langchain says, a document is a piece of text and optional metadata. Let's see a concrete example of it. If I go back to my PDF file, I see there are three pages. And as we have already selected, the one document is going to be created per page. It's obvious that this particular page will consolidate a document. Page number two will also become a document. And the metadata of that document in this case would be the page number. Let's go back to the RAG architecture. Now, once we have loaded the document, the RAG architecture suggests that we need to split it into further chunks, which means that each document will further be split. It. And as you can see here, when you want to deal with a long piece of text, it is necessary to split that up into chunks. So in our construct, this particular file will contain three documents and within each document, we can have multiple chunks. It is up to us and the chunk is going to be composed of number of characters. So we'll go back to our canvas. We'll click on plus sign and we'll look for something called text splitters. And one of the splitters that we are going to make use of is called recursive character text splitter. The chunk size, which is the number of characters. I just want to make sure that we make use of lesser number of characters. So this is roughly maybe 80 or 70 characters. So I'll just go ahead and choose 80 characters as a chunk size. In addition to that, when we are retrieving a response or when we are creating a vector, which we'll talk about shortly, we also want to specify whether more chunk has to be retrieved than the original. For example, 20 exceeding characters would be retrieve in addition to the original chunk. So I'll specify something around 20 here. And that's it. Now what I need to do is I need to pick up the output and drag drop with the text splitter. This is how the flow wise is orchestrated. I'll zoom out a bit, rearrange these items. Now with this sequence in place that we have loaded a PDF file, the recursive text connector splitter helps us divide that PDF file into documents and then documents into chunks the output documents need to be relayed into something else. If I refer back to the RAG architecture, we have not loaded the document, we've split it up. Now it's need to be converted into something called embedding. So first let's take a look at what is embedding. Embeddings create a vector presentation of a piece of text, which means that we'll take up this chunk and then create a vector representation of this piece of text. Now, because we'll have multiple chunks, we need to have a store. So if I go back, I need a store and I'm going to make use of something called in-memory store. All right, this is the one that I'm looking for, for so I'm going to drag drop it here. As you can see in the in-memory vector store node, the output of PDF file, which are the documents, are now going to be joined with the input of in-memory vector store. And how would they be converted into embedding? we will make use of a, another node, which will demonstrate shortly. So I'll drag drop this here. And to create the embeddings, which we have already seen that the embeddings are a representation or a vector representation of a piece of text. Now we need to create the embeddings. And to do that, I'll go back to the plus sign. Now, despite the fact that there are various embeddings available, since we are demonstrating it on top of OpenAI, and we will use OpenAI LLM behind the scene, we will look for the embeddings by OpenAI. 
This is OpenAI embedding. I'm going to drag drop it here. Output of these, the embeddings are going to be input to the vector store. And that is how the sequence looks like. Now, to provide the credentials, I'll go back to OpenAI API keys and I'll create a new key. I'll pick up the large language model 3. And now we move towards the last part of the demonstration. This whole flow has to end up somewhere and that is the bot or the chat window which we are looking for. for. And I'll search for something called conversational. We can already see that we have got a couple of choices here. And since we need to perform QA sort of operations, we're going to make use of conversational retrieval QA chain. Drag drop it here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Now, as we can see, the vector store retriever can be filled in using the memory store that we have already created. So I'm going to drag drop the output of in-memory vector store into the vector store retriever. For the chat model, I'm going to introduce a new node. And since again, we are going to make use of OpenAI, I'm going to search for something from OpenAI. Since we are building a chat based application, I'm going to make use of chat OpenAI, which is a wrapper on top of the existing LLM model. I'm going to drag drop it here. Again, we need to provide some of the credentials since I've already created Flowwise credentials and the APIs provider, I'm going to choose that. Behind the scene, I'm going to make use of 3.5 Turbo model because in the demonstration that we shown earlier, we also used the 3.5 model. And the temperature is something which controls the randomness of the response. I'm going to keep it at 0 0.9, but you can read more about it. And so the output of OpenAI needs to be dropped to chat model. Whole sequence looks good. We can just go ahead and save it. Give it a name. And now we should be able to interact with this chatbot. So I'm going to go to chat. I'm going to copy paste the same question that we asked earlier. And I'm going to ask it the same. And as you can see, now we have the response. And this is the response that was filled in based upon the document that we provided. We'll go back to latent. And this is the learning based startup. We can even ask and we can see the startup is based in London. So this is a complete end-to-end -end flow which is working. Now at this point of time, there is one last thing that I want to highlight. When I asked this particular question, what happened behind the scene, the query first went to the in-memory vector store where it looked for those embeddings which were closer to our question. So only those chunks were loaded into the memory which were relevant. But since the query was made to LLM behind the scene eventually, there is a cost associated with it and that is something we want to showcase. So let's say I go back to uh, this particular chunk and that is the chunk which in the vector space was identified. When I asked the query about latest space, the vector store identified that this is the relevant chunk. Luckily, with the name of tokenizer, there is a tool available on OpenAI platform. If I just copy paste the text over here, it's going to tell me the number of character which are utilized and the number of tokens which are going to be used to represent this particular text. And if we refer back to the documentation or the pricing of LLMs, if I scroll down, there are different models and for each one of them, there are different pricing of LLM. But since this is the model that we are making use of, we can see that there is a cost of input and there is a cost of output which is being retrieved. And over here, you can find out that against 1k tokens being supplied to the turbo model, the cost of $0.0005 is going to head to you. So I hope you like it and I'll be back with another Chen AI tool. Thank you.